Hey everybody, Cruiser Glide 3.0, 256 gigabyte USB flash drive. Um, I usually don't buy this capacity USB flash drive. This was on sale for a little less than 40 bucks at Costco. I thought I'd pick it up and give it a try. You know, even though this is a slower drive and I wouldn't use it to back up tons of data all the time, once you back up a large video project, it shouldn't take that long to back up just the project files. So I was thinking this might be a good auxiliary backup in addition to those typical low-cost external drives that I use to back up while I'm working. So all I'm going to do today is quickly open this up and actually run a couple of disk benchmarks to report the findings on the disk benchmarks. Typically these have been really highly priced and I've been concerned about putting too much data on a drive like this. So here we have Crystal Disk Mark. Let's just run it right off the bat with the default configuration. Okay, so here are the results. And basically the one that I try to focus on is the single threaded synchronous example where, uh, you know, you have the T1 right here. You can adjust these settings, but the reason why I focus on this is it tends to be the more realistic read-write pattern that I'll use with this kind of drive. I'm generally not doing random I.O., which uh, these other ones tend to focus on. And, and really, with any disk I.O. test like this, and this is a, a fine test, a lot of people use this to compare things, but no one particular test with one set of parameters is going to tell you everything. And this video is not really meant to get into those details, but the short of it is I'm going to focus on this first one here. Out of all of these, this first one here is closest to sequentially reading and writing a file. And as we see, as we see the read speed is faster as we would expect than the write speed, write speed is actually not so bad here. We can see that when we have multiple threads engaged in asynchronous I.O. against the drive, that the speed degrades quite significantly, especially for write, but also for read as well. That doesn't really tell me anything new. These kinds of USB drives are not really meant for heavy-duty asynchronous I.O. They're really storage devices where you're offloading stuff and you tend to copy, read, or write sequentially. That's one of the reasons why I tend to focus on this top line with these kinds of drives. Okay, so let's actually change the number of tests to one, and let's change this to four gigabytes, and that will let us test four gigabytes sequential reading and writing. And uh, let's only run this test. I'm not really concerned with these other ones. They're sort of a waste of time with this particular drive. And now the test is running. Now I find it interesting that we see a degradation in the speed here with write. All right, I want to do that test one more time, but this time I'm going to keep an eye here on the... Um, core temperatures. Um, I don't believe there's any throttling going on here. I actually think there's some caching on the USB drive. And when we do a sequential copy of a large file, we're hitting the limit on that. And then the performance bottleneck based on the size of that file and its use of the cache is causing the performance hit to creep up and become visible. I made this video a few days ago. I didn't post it because it was nagging at me that I was focused on discussing cache on the USB drive. Now, now these low-cost USB flash drives tend to use a flavor of flash memory known as multi-level cell or MLC and you can look on the Wikipedia article about that it's actually quite informative and there's a number of other places on the web including on YouTube here where they talk about flash memory I'm gonna put a link below to a conference where these two uh, gentlemen actually uh, researched uh, counterfeit USB drives as well as um, infiltrating some of the USB drives to talk about security issues and it was a very fascinating talk and one that I felt was very informed. It's a couple of years old, but the introduction actually would be very informative even for an average user with some technical knowledge. But the short version I want to insert here is that the USB flash drive itself has a lot of stuff going on. You can think of these devices as having their own computer on there along with like a USB controller and some other stuff. And the smarts in these USB drives knows how to deal with this multi-level cell memory. And there's a lot of tricks that have to go on in order to create a reliable 
reliable device with this relatively inexpensive memory. That talk I just mentioned actually has a good introduction to that, I feel. I didn't want to get into those low-level details in this talk. This is just a high-level talk about what I do to test a drive like this to observe where those cutoff points are, where the performance gets hit and whatnot. And that's kind of the goal here as we continue with this video. But the very short version about multi-level cell memory is that multi-level cell flash memory has a tendency to have some reliability issues and some limitations in its lifetime. And because of the amalgam of all these issues, the smarts that are on these USB flash drives tends to be kind of intricate, where they might take something that they wrote to one place, and when you rewrite it, they may actually write it to some other places to distribute the writes evenly throughout the memory so that they wear it out more evenly. There's also some error correction code ECC stuff that goes on in there, and that's a whole big subject. But the bottom line is, think of it like this. These USB thumb drives, these flash drives that have this relatively inexpensive MLC memory, they basically have some smarts on there to do a whole lot of processing every time data is read or written to the drive, and especially written. There's a lot of smarts that goes into writing effectively and dealing with error correction stuff and a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. So there's some level of computation and processing that needs to go on as it figures out how to write data or deal with various errors that can crop up, all to try to create a seamless experience for you, the user of a relatively inexpensive consumer flash drive. So in this video where I discuss cache, I was thinking I was just going to say cache to sort of be a catch-all word to kind of mean the overall potential buffering that can, that can take place before we start hitting that bottleneck based on anything that's needed to eventually write the data and be able to accept more data. And so I'm not going to talk about all the intricacies. The bottom line is when you're flooding a device like this with a stream of data, you're going to hit some maximum throughput. But that maximum throughput, as you'll find out later on in this video as we continue on here, you're going to hit an eventual threshold where you're going to hit this ceiling, this limit. That ceiling can be hidden from you unless you write data to the drive in a particular way. Usually it has to do with the amount that you write. So if you do some tests with relatively small amounts of data or small file sizes, you may not actually see what the uh, throughput is, the effective throughput is, when you copy, let's say, a larger file, like a video file. There's more than just caching going on here. Caching is just where something is held until it can be written, where you no longer need to use the cache, or what I'll refer to loosely is that maybe higher cost memory that provides faster I.O. but is uh, more scarce on a particular device and allows to provide for some buffering. But in discussing this video, it doesn't really matter where the buffering occurs. As we discuss this, what we're ultimately hitting is a bottleneck within the card, and that has to do with the overall requirements by the card, the speed to write to the memory effectively uh, in order to complete the write. And all I'm saying right now is you'll find out later on in this video that with any any of these devices, you won't see that actual throughput unless you actually do a test with a certain amount of data that exceeds a particular minimum that will hide that maximum throughput uh, limitation from you unless you exceed it. And we'll do that as we continue on in this video, as you'll see. All right, so that's it. Let's go back to the original video. So now I'm going to copy this, and um, we will notice that this this starts out at the average that was the original test. And we'll notice that it'll start dropping at about 500 um, megabytes. And from here on out, it will do its usual fluctuation. The average it came out down here was 25 megabytes a second. So that pretty much means this will be at 25, but plus or minus. So it'll go up to, you know, the 40s and then it'll drop down below 25. And that's why we're getting this average here, because occasionally it's hitting some sort of performance bottleneck, and I believe that that's actually on the USB drive itself. I can hear the fan starting up, but I don't really see anything significant going on over here. Now, there's another thing here too. There's a little bit of consistency with this performance hit. If I cancel this copy and I just simply recopy again, you'll notice that this thing starts right off at the same performance up there in the 40s and 50s, and it's gonna drop down right when we hit about 500 megabytes. Well, in this case, it actually, it did it a little bit early. Let me actually wait after I stop here for just a couple seconds. 
let the drive settle. Okay, the drive is now settled, and now I'm going to go and copy this. And I knew it settled by watching the lights on the drive. And we're at the, the 15, which is the original average, and right when we get here, going to start dropping down. Now that's fairly consistent, so I'm going to stop this again. going to wait for that drive light to start blinking slowly. That means it's settled, it's not doing any work. I'm now going to copy again, and we're just going to see this thing repeat. And that really seems to indicate to me, my best guess would be that there is some caching and it hits a bottleneck that it normally wouldn't hit when we copy a file that's about 500 megabytes or less. So now what I want to do is drop this to 100 megabytes. Let's run this sequential test. I have a hunch now our write speeds will go right back up to about 50. Okay, not quite at 50 but it definitely increased. Another interesting test here is to copy these 100 megabyte files. By the time the fifth file gets copied, we start to see the speed degrade, which means after about 500 megabytes, it actually seems to happen a little bit longer into the copy process than when copying one big large file, and I'm guessing that's because the saturation doesn't happen as quickly because there's a little break in copying between these smaller individual files. That, of course, is an assumption. So the short takeaway from this is that this flash drive will hit write speeds of about 25 megabytes per second if we are doing a lot of writing to the drive to the point where it's internal cache, and this is an assumption on my part, but it seems that the internal cache becomes saturated and backed up because of the effort that needs to be made to write data to the internal memory on the flash drive. And so we therefore start to see a performance uh, bottleneck be hit when that cache becomes saturated and it therefore exposes the effort that is being made, the time that it takes to make effort to write the data to the drive. This is a nice little storage device. There's nothing fantastic that I'm, you know, it's not like really groundbreaking this you know video it's just a USB drive but it happens to have large capacity and I was curious you know what sort of throughput I would get when writing large amounts of data to that and what I realize is the first time I back up a very large product project with a lot of video files what's going to happen is it's going to take a long time once it gets past that 500 megabyte mark it's going to take about 25 megabytes per second rather than the 50 megabytes a second that you would see if you just do a simple test with smaller sizes, uh, smaller file sizes. And, and to me that's significant because that's about uh, twice as long as it will take. But it's not really a deal breaker for a device like this. So I feel from a utilitarian standpoint there's nothing wrong with this. It's just there's a little thing in there. If you don't test it with large files, you're not going to see that your write speeds are going to divide in two basically. They're going to go down by one half and take twice as long to write once you're writing files that are larger than about 500 megabytes. Now, if you write a file that's 500 megabytes and then you wait a few seconds and write another file that's 500 megabytes, you're probably going to reach close to that 40 or 50 megabytes per second based on what I've seen. The, the issue has to do with continuous writing beyond 300 to 500 megabytes. That's what I notice in this. If you're continuously writing, that can happen with one large 4 gigabyte video file. Once you reach 3 or 400 or 500 uh, megabytes, it'll start to go from 50 to 40 megabytes per second down to about 25 megabytes per second based on what we've seen here. If you write a bunch of 100 megabyte files, once you get to about the third or fourth file or fifth file or something, you're going to start to see it degrade in speed. Keep in mind, as you write one of those files and it stops to then go and start to write the next file, there's sort of a sequential thing that goes on there. So there's a little bit of a break there and it gives the cache a chance to kind of write some things so we don't see the saturation from what I've noticed here as quickly when we do it that way. So I think what we're saying here is if you continuously write to this, which you very often would do if backing up lots of data, you're basically going to hit about 25 megabytes per second write speed. That's what I noticed. Now the caveat here is it can vary slightly based on your system. So the short version is silly little video. This thing actually is fine from a utilitarian standpoint. If you're going to write large files, don't test with a small test that writes small files where you see 50 megabytes 
megabytes per second average write speeds because what you should be writing is large files even do a copy of a large file with Explorer that's sometimes a very good way with devices like this to see a very simple perf baseline there where you can see as you're copying a four gig file what happens over the life of that copy and you'll very often notice with devices like this it'll start off really quickly and then that cache or something gets saturated in the device itself and it'll start to drop down and that's what you really want to look at because if you're copying large amounts of data to this um, you're probably concerned with how long that's going to take so I don't know what it's like to use this device over time. Another thing is reliability. Does this thing flake out when I have lots of data on it or does it work? And I'm gonna keep an eye on this. All right, everybody, that's it. Simple video, hope you enjoyed it. Take care, have a great week. If you like this video, please do click like. And if you wanna subscribe, oh, I would love to have you as a subscriber. And that's it. All right, take care, thanks, bye.